I've been black my whole life. I've been treated differently my whole life because of that. And my mother and my father protected us and kept us safe. I wasn't able to do that for my mother. My name is Garnell Whitfield, Jr. I'm the son of Mrs. Ruth Elizabeth Whitfield, 86 years old, the eldest victim of the uh, Buffalo Massacre. She was killed by an 18-year-old white supremacist. Her and uh, nine other pillars of our community. I've lived in Buffalo uh, all my life. My dad uh, was in uh, Nashville, Alabama. My mom's family uh, emanated from uh, Mississippi. They got together and uh, uh, moved to Buffalo. We were considered uh, like the Partridge family or the, uh, the Waltons. We had a traditional family. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. Uh, my dad worked multiple jobs so she could stay at home. In the third grade, I think it was in 1960, we moved. We were the second black family in a several block radius. Um, there were no other blacks. So this is our daily routine. It's our walk. I'm very cognizant of our families not being the norm um, in our community. Um, we're wonderfully blessed. I don't know anybody who had their family intact as we did for that long. I've always understood that our day was coming. Never would have anticipated anything like this happening. I, I've got a lot of favorite memories of, of my mom. Um, obviously, nothing's more current or more memorable to me than the last time I was with my mom. One of the things I came up with for Mother's Day was I was going to build her a a raised garden. On that Friday before she passed, um, I actually finished the garden. Um, and she sat out in the yard with me several times. And on that Saturday morning when I, about eight o'clock in the morning, I came back and I knocked on her door. She didn't answer the door. And I wasn't sure if she was up or not. I said, okay, I'm not gonna wake her up. And I'll meet her up at the nursing home, which we often did. Um, I never saw her again. Things are different, and we have to learn how to uh, evolve and get along and, and stay close. Now that mom's actually gone, now that we actually <clears throat> have to deal with each, other, with each other and do the things for ourselves that she did for all of us, um, that's the biggest difference, I guess. Yeah, we're... Uh, having a guardianship article 81 hearing for me to uh, uh, get guardianship uh, over my father um, so that I can uh, make decisions about his care. My father has dementia and has traumatic brain injury. So my dad has been in that nursing home for eight years now. That tops is a couple blocks, maybe, maybe four or five blocks from the nursing home that she went to every day. She was his caretaker. She was his advocate. I mean, they were married for 68 years. Um, and she never left his side. I've got to go talk to the people at the nursing home. I've got to pay the attorney for his services for this. I'm going to um, Suffolk County Community College. They invited me to speak there. more than hurt, we're angry, we're mad as hell because this should have never happened. 
Every enforcement agency charged with protecting the homeland has conducted risk and threat analysis and determined that white supremacy is the number one threat to the homeland. And yet, nothing has been done to mitigate or eradicate it. Before my mom, I wasn't an activist. I wasn't out here uh, 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 talking about white supremacy and talking about these things in the manner that I should. I wasn't using my platform or my voice for that purpose. Now it's like I'm working again. I got to pay attention all day, every day, um, so I don't miss anything. Tom Brady and his wife are getting a divorce. I guess the big stick in the mud is uh, she was happy when he retired, but then he unretired a few weeks later. And in many ways, I'm coming out of retirement too, um, chasing all this stuff around. And, uh, but we're not getting a divorce, right, honey? <laughs> oh, she's over there. <laughs> uh, so she's been good so far. scheduled for a hearing uh, but uh, it's been postponed now and uh, they requested additional time. I know that we are looking well beyond him and uh, what he did and trying to identify uh, any support he might have had. I went to some of the court hearings yeah I went to the ones that I thought I needed to go to I represented my family um, but uh, listen um, this ain't about that guy. I'm focused on the things that empowered him and the reason he became who he was. The systems and the people uh, that continue to be empowered to this day and they continue to, to, to make victims of us all. You can't sit here and be comfortable and pray and expect things to be okay. You gotta do something. It's my hope and prayer that uh, we will not go quietly into the night and that we will uh, work for the rest of my life for sure to, uh, to bring voice to her and the other victims and to speak out against white supremacy, white nationalism and the hate uh, that is inherent uh, in America. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.